I'm still pretty humbled by the fact, and I think it's a tremendous honor that our Navy and our nation would entrust me to be the first commanding officer. Not so much of the ship, because the ship really represents about a $13 billion investment uh, from our, our taxpayers. But really the, the true value to me and the, the greatest honor is to be the commanding officer of the crew that will sail her to sea for the first time. You know, it's going to be roughly 3,000 men and women, I, I think far and away our nation's most precious assets. Here we only have about 300 sailors in our command right now. We aren't living or working on board the ship, so we work out of some buildings. So the challenge for us becomes to create the culture and the command climate that's really going to make Gerald R. Ford a successful warship. Anyone who's ever served on a ship in the Navy knows that a, a command kind of gets its own tone or, or develops a tone that subsequent commanding officers can influence, but they may never be able to really set that tone. I think it's set right at the be absolute beginning. That's the vital part for us, is developing the command climate and how we treat people and the work ethic that we have and how we train people and the standards that we have. Uh, the fact that Gerald R. Ford is uh, the namesake of this ship, you know, he was a man of integrity and we've really been able to get our arms around that. And if you look at the motto that we've taken on as our, for our ship, integrity at the helm, I think that captures Gerald R. Ford's presidency and really his life perfectly. So we're very fortunate to have Gerald Ford as a, as a namesake for the ship and uh, his lasting legacy of integrity. That's, that's a, a great ideal to build a crew around.